Good afternoon. Welcome to Matador News. I'm Nicole Denado. And I'm Danny Max. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon made its big debut last night. The show had outstanding ratings. It drew more than 11.3 million people. That number tripled Jay Leno's average ratings. We'll have more on that later in our newscast. Everyone's favorite TV shows ends or get canceled at some point. But now some of the old favorites are making a comeback. Tara Sudbach is in the studio with a guest to talk more about the subject. All right, so I'm joined here today by Jennifer Luxton, who is the arts and entertainment editor at The Sundial. And her section ran a story about the revival of old TV shows. So we're going to talk about that, uh, talk about that a little bit. So can you explain to us how people are getting the word out that they want their favorite shows back on air? Um, when you have shows that have been canceled or they're ended, um, people are now have the outlet of the internet to talk about you know the excitement for the show and social media to interact with the studios to try to get that back on the air great and i know one of the shows that's making a comeback is veronica mars and they're coming back as a movie and i heard that fans um they actually started a kickstarter account to raise money can you talk a little bit about that and how fans raise money for it yeah kickstarter is the crowdsourced sort of um place for people to get different projects funded by people on the internet so there was enough money going through this Kickstarter campaign to get an actual movie produced to bring back the Veronica Mars programming. Got it and um, finally there are so many shows still being made and so many people want their old shows, their old favorite shows to come back. How do you think with Netflix and all the new series coming out what is it going to be like for TV from now on if people are going on Netflix and watching their old shows um, that's actually where a lot of studios are noticing buzz, um, like with Netflix realized that people were going back and watching Arrested Development. They were binging on the series, so that was where they got the idea to turn around and pick it up as a canceled show to make it a Netflix original series. And you're having a lot more streaming outlets turning around and making their own programs based on consumer demand. And do you think that these shows are going to be um, mainly everyone's going to watch it on Netflix from now on, or do you think people will still tune in on TV? I think that cable's definitely taking a hit. Um, streaming may be the future. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Back to you guys in the studio. It's going to be hot and sunny in Los Angeles this week, but that's not exactly good news. Mayor Eric Garcetti is urging Angelinos to conserve as much water as possible during the state's worst drought in recent history. Incentives for residents are already in effect. The Department of Water and Power launched a Cash for Grass program where it will pay $2 per square foot of lawn that's replaced with drought-resistant landscaping. Even the tech world is water conscious. New mobile apps allow users to track their water consumption and play games using water-saving tips. The Northeast has been hit by another snowstorm. Several inches of snow have accumulated from the storm that moved in from the Midwest. It has caused numerous car accidents. Schools are considering extending the school year to make up for the missed days. The temperature will rise later this week and that could cause flooding from melting snow. On the West Coast, rain and snow has brought down trees and destroyed homes in Oregon. Mudslides in Seattle have trapped cars on highways and closed roads. And another storm could be headed into the east later this week. Crime has gone up significantly in four Los Angeles neighborhoods this week. An analysis of LAPD's crime database reports a 50% increase in violent crime in Reseda, Woodland Hills, Pacoima, and Vermont Slauson. Reseda had the greatest percentage increase. It reported eight crimes over the, over the past week, compared to a weekly average of two over the last three months. A crime alert has gone out about bike thefts on the CSUN campus. The alert has been in effect for two weeks. Four thefts have happened within a few hours of each other in early February. The bikes were taken from racks near Sierra, Sequoia, and Jacaranda Halls and the Student Rec Center. Three were locked with cable locks, but it is unknown how the fourth was secured. Campus police are advising students to lock their bikes with steel U-locks, register them with the police department, and use the Matador bicycle compounds. CSUN now offers a car rental service for students. Zipcar offers students a chance to rent a car with an all-inclusive fee, which covers gas, mileage, and insurance, starting at $7.50 an hour. 
Students must undergo a driving record background check and age verification for the application process. Zipcar has been available to students since the beginning of the spring semester. The northbound lanes of the 405 freeway are now open after being closed over the weekend. The freeway couldn't be opened any earlier due to new pavement. Officials say traffic may have been a pain for some motorists, but it will save a lot of discomfort in the long run. New data from, Pew Research, from a Pew Research sur uh, survey suggests that young adults with degrees earn far more than those with only a high school diploma. The research found people 25 to 32 with college degrees made $17,000 more in 2012 than those with just a high school diploma. The pay for college graduates has risen and the earnings of the less educated have fallen, resulting in the pay gap. Nine out of ten graduates with at least a bachelor's degree said college already has paid off or would in the future. The Los Angeles City Council is considering an increase of the living wage for workers in big hotels. Three city council members have proposed increases um, of wages to $15 an hour. City Councilman Mike Bonin says the increase is for the economic justice and growth. He also called it a moral and financial imperative for our city. The council is expected to vote later today. The debate over mammogram screenings continues after a highly controversial study was published last week in the British Medical Journal. The study said annual mammograms for women 40 to 59 does not reduce the mortality rate for breast, from breast cancer beyond that of regular physical exams and screenings. The report has come under fire by the American College of Radiology and the Society of Breast Imaging. They criticized the study for using outdated technology and poorly trained technicians. They warned that this study is misleading and may influence women to forego their annual mammogram screenings. Approximately 39 million mammogram procedures are done in the United States each year. While mammogram screenings, screenings have limitations, they are able to detect cancer, which could otherwise go unnoticed. Anti-government protesters in Venezuela took to the streets once again today. The protesters blocked traffic. That follows the violent deaths of three protesters last week. Venezuelans are frustrated with the nation's weak economy. Meanwhile, pro-government supporters also have marched in the streets. They held a rally called March for Peace. Anti-government protesters and police have battled one another. Media reports say 23 people have been injured. United Airlines is investigating severe turbulence that shook a plane flying from Denver, Denver to Billings, Montana this morning. Passengers panicked, screamed, and one woman called out for her baby. Three crew members and two passengers were taken to local hospitals. The extent of their injuries is not known at this hour. Amnesty agreements in the Ukraine collapsed today as anti-government protesters rioted against police in Kiev. Police failed to block thousands of protesters from reaching the main government building today. Police used tear gas and shields in an attempt to control the riot. However, rioters prevailed, throwing rocks and fireballs at police and security forces. Three people were killed and more than 150 were injured. The rioters are Ukrainian citizens who oppose joining the European Union. They are demanding the resignation of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych. And now for sports, here's Jamie Pittenger. Former Lakers star Lamar Odom will sign a two-month contract with the Spanish basketball team Basconia. Odom can make his EuroLeague debut this Saturday against Barcelona. Odom has not played since his brief stint last season with the Los Angeles Clippers, where he averaged a career low of four points and six rebounds. Odom has also played for the Dallas Mavericks, Miami Heat, and was a two-time champion with the Los Angeles Lakers. Odom was arrested last summer for drunk driving just before divorcing reality show star Khloe Kardashian. Figure skaters Meryl Davis and Charlie White are the first Americans to win the gold medal for ice dance. The two began skating together 17 years ago in Michigan and have never thought about parting ways. The champions finished just over four points ahead of the Canadian team. The wins add to silver and bronze medals won earlier in the games. There are, they are the first American figure skaters to win three medals in a single Olympics. Both men and women's CSUN basketball teams defeated UC Santa Barbara this past weekend. The Lady Matadors won 78-54. They now hold the first place in the Big West Conference. 
Junior center Camille Malknecht set a CSUN single game record with 22 rebounds and 21 points. The men's basketball team ended Santa Barbara's four game winning streak, winning in overtime 80 to 78. Junior forward Stephen Maxwell sealed the win by hitting a jumper with just .01 seconds remaining in the game. Senior guard Josh Green led the Matadors in scoring, finishing with 23 points and four assists. High school basketball manager in Philadelphia has signed a two-day contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. Kevin Groh was born with Down syndrome, but that hasn't stopped him from becoming a star. In his senior night game, he scored 14 points, including a three-pointer at the buzzer. Ben Solemn decided to let Groh play as a thank you for all of his dedication. Groh is not a stranger on the court. He has won several gold medals in the Special Olympics. And that's it for sports. Back to you, Danny. Thanks, Jamie. The Pan-African Studies Department will show a documentary of students' efforts to bring ethnic support on campus in the 60s and 70s. The Storm at Valley State is directed by CSUN alum Paul Kulak and illustrates how students rallied for courses related to minority cultures. The documentary also focuses on the anti-Vietnam War movement on college campuses as a whole. The Storm at the Valley State will be shown at the Grand Salon tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. Actress, El <clears throat> Actress Ellen Page announced she was gay at the Human Rights Campaign Foundation in Las Vegas this past Valentine's Day. The actress is acclaimed for her role in Juno, an independent film in 2007. She said keeping her sexuality a secret jeopardized her mental health and relationships. Page said she hopes that she can make a difference in the lives of, in the lives of others struggling to come out. As we reported earlier today, Jimmy Fallon made his debut as the host of The Tonight Show last night. Fallon takes over for Jay Leno. Fallon is the sixth host of the show in 60 years. The first guests were Will Smith and the band U2. The Tonight Show returns to New York after 43 years in Burbank. <clears throat> Fallon hosted Late Night for five years. The new host of Late Night is Saturday Night Live's Seth Meyers. That's it for our show. Thank you for watching the afternoon edition of Matador News. I'm Danny Max. And I'm Nicole Edenado. Have a great day.